Thank you, Honorable Chair. And I know this issue has been extremely emotive. But I would like not to dwell in the politics, but look at this proposal from a finance perspective as we did. We have three types of VAT in this country. A product is either zero-rated, tax-exempted, or vertible. So for the vertible supplies, whether goods or services, all of them are at 16%, apart from fuel, which is at 8%. So what does that do for that particular sector? There's something you call input VAT and output VAT. So for all the players in this particular fuel sector, they pay input tax at 16%. But once they sell that fuel to the market, they sell it at 8%. So when they go to claim their VAT, they are always on a credit position. Let me finish. What therefore means, what means, what it means to be on credit position, what it means, we had you. Give me a minute to finish my argument. What it means to be on a credit position is that it is taxpayers' money that has been paying the remaining 8%. And that is a fact. So this 8% that you have been subsidizing by, 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 by charging VAT on fuel at 8% on for all the other supplies 16%, it means it is taxpayers' money that was paying this 8%. And this is what this proposal is curing. Members of the public told us, look at the other taxes. That are, comprises, that, are, that are composed this uh, on fuel. And honorable chair, we looked at them. Honorable members of parliament who are here will know that the fuel is distributed equitably among all the 290 constituencies in this country to repair our Maram roads. That is a fact. So we looked at what are the other taxes in fuel that we can reduce. And honorable chair, we looked at import declaration fee, what you call IDF, we have reduced that from 3.5% to 2.5%. We looked at railway development levy, then we have reduced that from 2% to 1.5%. And those wind are up, facts. Wind up, Chair. Minority Leader. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, let me add my voice to this.